Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome in. It's Thursday again. Uh, today's January 21st, 2021. If you're watching this at 9 p.m. Eastern, it is live. I'll probably be live till about 9.40, 9.45. Uh, otherwise, you're watching the replay, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch the replays of these live shows if you can't join us live. Otherwise, welcome in to everyone that is here live in the audience. Uh, I know that we have quite a few of you still here waiting. And I did see uh, Adam, our admin, if you have a blue, or if you have a question or comment, excuse me, the blue wrench over there is Adam from Adam's Exploits. He is the admin in the chat. I'm sure some of our other admins will join us soon. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, they are here to help you. Also, a few of our regular vo uh, viewers, Mike from Flippin' Goodies and, um, and uh, Randy Fasig also in the house. So thank you guys for being here. And uh, let's get uh, Adam. Sound and video is good. Ooh, thank you. I uh, forgot to ask about that. I always ask you guys. Audio, video, good. Looks good. So um, otherwise, I want to just jump right in and get started. Uh, first, a couple of notes. If you need help with taxes, tonight's the last night of Mark II's special uh, promotion. He is called Not Your Dad CPA, a licensed CPA, a reseller himself, specializes in e-commerce. He can help you. Uh, it's linked below. Please consider getting Mark's services. Tonight is $100 off until the end of the night. Uh, welcome in, Bill and Dave. And uh, otherwise, that is uh, going to run out tonight. So if you need tax help for last year or this year, uh, Mark's the CPA, he's licensed, and he's the guy to definitely go to. So um, yeah, uh, six-figure sellers, big sellers, not even six-figure, but mostly the six-figure sellers. But anybody who's making full-time income reselling, uh, big sellers, you know, million-dollar sellers, what do all of these people do? differently. And if you're watching this video in a replay or you're just joining us live after I start this, you can always rewind and watch the beginning. But what do big sellers, big resellers do differently? And this is really any entrepreneur, any real business person. What do we do differently that other people who aren't necessarily successful or can't figure out how to get to certain success levels, um, what do they do differently that other people may or may not do either all of or part of. Does anybody have any guesses? I saw Star put in the chat, they have bullet journals. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be one of, the, uh, one of the things that I touch on here, bullet journals is kind of a planning thing. Um, what do you guys, I wanna see in the chat though, what do you guys, um, think that the answers are, because I've got 10 of them. And I think this is 10 of them is really important. And uh, just give me just a second here, guys. Um, I want to hear, I'm, I'm interested in what everybody else thinks, because for me to come up with these 10, I really had to think about it. Um, and a few of them were obvious. A few of them were not so obvious. But when I think about them going down the road, I'm like, man, that's something that I just cognitively do on a regular basis and it really helps with production. It really helps with sales. It really helps take numbers higher. So I'm looking at the chat. I'm gonna give you guys just a minute to uh, put in what you think it is that you would think that I would respond with. Um, laser focus, crazy hours, delegating tasks. Hey Figgy, what's up? Working lots of hours, a bullet journal, strong work ethic. Yeah, that's all, all great answers, man, fantastic. A passion, Randy touched on a passion. I touched on it in the video a few days ago. And Vic says buying in bulk, scalability. So let's jump into these 10. And uh, and really there's there's more things to it, but, um, and then there's one bonus one um, that I'm gonna give you guys. So <clears throat> I think the first thing that I'm gonna jump into is just absolutely, um, incredible, like absolutely not afraid to fail eight hours of sleep. Um, you know, all of this is is great. I'm just looking at the take, take breaks if you need it. Danny, yeah, we're going to talk on that too. So number one is not sweating the small things. Let me tell you guys about how frustrating it is when I go into Facebook groups and people are asking questions that you know, not the questions that we see every day that may not be so obvious. I'm not talking about the people that are asking about like, is it okay to cut down a box or this or that? That's, that's not what I'm talking about. Those are kind of minor. But um, the thing that I'm talking about is people that are, you know, worried about little things. Like, uh, I'm using a box and it has some marker on the corner of it. Is somebody going to be complaining that my box that I shipped it to has marker in it? Like, as, you're not using a pizza box to ship to them, right? Like, these are very 
minor things. I, 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 when I sit here and tell you guys the most minor things I see in my group every day, it blows my mind where people are like, is it okay if I use red ink or blue ink? And I'm like, does it matter? Can you see it? Can you read it? Like these, this isn't the actual examples. I don't want to call anyone out or single anyone out, but there is literally like, I don't know. It's like these super minor things that people are just worried about. They stress about things all day long that it just doesn't deserve more than two seconds of time. You guys got to focus on the bigger picture. Focus on like, I need to ship a box. And I know people don't want to mess things up. Um, I know people don't want to, I know people don't want to do things wrong, but you just got to get past things. You can't spend six hours plugging away at something that you could have just got past. You know, if, if it's that serious and you have to get an answer, go work on other stuff while you wait for that answer or while, you know, you figure it out or whatever. Like you can't worry about anything all day long. That's not getting production. It's just dragging you down. Aurora, you didn't miss anything. Nothing yet. Uh, I know a few of you were late, no worries. But uh, so number one, thing that I think six figure sellers, resellers and successful entrepreneurs do all day long that other people don't do is they focus on the bigger picture. They focus on the more important, bigger things. And if there are little things, they either delegate that stuff or they go find, you know, Dennis, just put it, use your time wisely. VOT, the value of time, both uh, Adam and Dennis, both putting that in there. And perfectionism is not key. A lot of people try to do things perfect. And that's, look, we used to, me and Star had this talk while they were in Florida. We used to record videos, my God, we'd like bleh, bleh, over a video and be like, nope, delete, re-record like a 40 minute video over a blue. What? Just laugh it off and keep going, edit it out, cut it, re-record a 40 minute video. I used to do that over like a random audio thing. Time management, stream from the tub. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just, you, you can't always be perfect and you can't let imperfect moments waste your time. So number one is really focusing on the big picture, the value of your time, not sweating the small stuff. It's all wrapped into this one time management, uh, productivity, profitability thing. So, um, yeah, star used to delete her stuff over trains going by. I mean, who cares, right? Like, psh, I like trains. Okay, so that's number one. Number two goes along with this as well. If you make a plan, Star's got a great bullet journal for this. I don't use one. I use digital. I put thing either in my phone or the iPad or whatever. But, you know, make a plan, list. I don't care if you have an app for that. Remember those commercials? There's an app for that. I remember those days when people didn't even know what an app was. Uh, if you write down a list, if you have a digital notepad for it, um, if you have like, you know, your, your notes app or whatever it is, you guys, you guys know, I sit here and make notes all day long. So, um, have a list, have a plan. If you are flying by the seat of your pants, you're waking up, you don't even know what to do. You're never going to be successful, right? Um, you're never going to be, uh, somebody who knows the goal. You're never going to reach a goal if you don't even have a goal written down. So number two is planning, really making the most of, every chance you get to set goals and meet those goals. The more goals that you meet, the more the more affirmation you give yourself and the more it boosts you up. So having those goals, really important. Yeah, I do have a wholesale buying guide. It's part of the training program below that you can pick up, Thrifted Grindhouse. 29 bucks wholesale is included in that. Um, so number two, making a list, checking it twice, having a plan. Number three, a lot of you said, is actually completing the list, putting in the work, doing the projects and efforts that it takes. Nobody's going to get rich. Nobody's going to make money. No one's going to be successful without actually working. The only people that get that is if they inherit it, they win the lottery, they find a bag of cash on the ground. Most of us are not going to make money and get successful by just laying around all day, right? There, there are some lazy people that are lucky. They have an industry or a YouTube channel that put out one video a week. Even those people take a lot of time to edit and make content. So um, that is um, that is number three, is really putting in the work. If you don't put in the work, you're never gonna get anything out of it. And that goes for most of us. Again, there are some lucky people. Otherwise, um, you're just never gonna make it, right? Yeah. Number four is a hard one. It's a big one and a hard one for a lot of people to get 
through their head. And it's scary because a lot of people don't have the ability to do number four, but they have to. Even if you don't have the ability, they have to. They have to find a way. What do you think number four is? It's something that scares people a lot. And I'll give you a hint. It's because a lot of people don't have it to do. They don't have it available to do. Did I buy a lottery ticket? Uh, I will buy one in the morning. A uh, billion dollars. I'll try. <laughs> Um, somebody got the Powerball ticket in Maryland, maybe a relative of mine. If it's a relative of mine, they better speak up because I've done a lot for my family. <laughs> but um, what is number four? What is it that people are afraid to do almost more than anything? Trying new things is a great one, but uh, there, there's something that a lot of people don't have access to. Tommy Gaskins, look how quick he is spending. You have to spend money. Number four is you have to spend money to make money. If you don't spend money, you'll never make money. It just doesn't work that way. Getting free merchandise or cheap bins merchandise is a great way to build an account, a build a, build a business, but you got to spend money. I just spent, well, it will be $5,500 by next week um, or possibly this weekend. You know, we're always spending wholesale. I'm splitting that with, with Keith and Star. So we're spending 2750 bucks on one purchase. We spent at like 14,000 on that tractor trailer. We spent after shipping and fees and boxes and labor, we spent on the remote controls, we spent like 6,600. So just in the last 12 months, we've spent, you know, 30 or $40,000. And a lot of people don't have a lot of money to spend. So what's the answer if you don't have a lot of extra money to spend? Well, the answer is you have to, you have to like, it reinvest everything that you make. Anything that you make, you have to reinvest. But second, you have to sell what you can. If you don't need it, sell it. Get it out of your house. If you don't have you know, available credit or credit cards or loans, which I never encourage anyone to take loans or credit cards or anything to start a business, but if you are profitable and you know what to make money and you're, you're responsible and you're, you can use the credit card to spend $1,000 and then sell it all month long and get your money back and make your credit card payment, roll the inventory and the money over and keep going, then that is something that you should do. But a lot of people have that credit card. They're making money. Let's say they only have $1,000 of their own and it's producing them another $1,000. Well, they're either not reinvesting the money or they might have a credit card with two, three, four thousand on it and they're afraid to spend that money even though they could turn the two or three into two or three more instead of one. So there's always ways, um, you know, or get, getting a part time job just to have some money or getting a full time job to get some money. There are absolutely ways to get money to spend money. And if you don't spend money, you will never make money. I never made money when I don't spend money. And that's just the way it goes. Even on YouTube, I spend money. I have to buy, I have to buy equipment. I had to buy cameras. I had to buy, you know, I do some advertising. I had to buy uh, microphones. I had to buy all light kits. I had to buy everything. So YouTube even, co you know, costs some money too. Um, so, you know, and, and if you're not making enough off of what you're spending, don't be married to your inventory, sell it, turn it over and keep spending it. You keep spending and keep making. I see some people who are like, oh, I spent all my money. And now I'm selling stuff, but I'm just replacing that money. And now I'm scared to do it again. Just keep spending, keep spending. So that's number four. Um, number five is so important. And I stress it a lot. Again, Mark's uh, Not Your Dad CPA licensed CPA course down below is on sale tonight, $100 off and it ends tonight. So uh, number five is account for everything. Anybody who is successful knows, you've heard it on Shark Tank. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business, right? I have to agree. What I know, what I'm making, it works in two ways. So the two ways it works is when I know what I'm making and if I'm profitable, it's motivational to me, right? If I know like, oh my God, I made, you know, a thousand bucks profit today or next week or whatever, I can be like, let me build. If I'm not profitable, it'll help me get rid of the things that are not profitable, which will in turn fix the profitability and then so on and so forth. So if you don't account, you don't know your numbers, you'll never be successful. Nobody that's a six-figure seller, nobody that's successful, even making 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars a year um, is, uh, is, is not accounting for and tracking their numbers, doesn't know what's going on. They know what's going on. I assure you, I can tell you to the dollar how much money I make month over month over month. Uh, I may not know during the month. I try to keep track of it during the month, but at the end of every month, you can ask Star, who's in the chat right now, you can ask Keith who may or may not be watching, um, they can ask me at any time what our wholesale accounting is and I can tell them within 
a few dollars to a few hundred dollars at most. And if at any point we need to know, we can go back and pull the numbers uh, pretty quickly. Um, have I, I haven't heard Abercrombie on the, Abercrombie is on the Vero list, but you can sell it no problem. Um, just because they're on the Vero list. I did a video earlier today, yeah, and Star did a live show with me about it. So you can check out her video or mine. She can link it. Um, so that's number, that is, uh, that is number five. We, you know, we account for everything. We have numbers. We know our numbers. We, we know what's going on in the business. Uh, otherwise, you're never going to be successful. You'll never fix it. So, all right. So that is number five. Let's move on to number six. And number six is we network. We use social media at least a little bit, and we get to know other people, and we learn from other people. What's up, Philly Picker? Welcome in. Uh, if you just joined the chat, thank you for being here. We're talking about lessons, uh, things that six-figure sellers, successful entrepreneurs, and any successful business person does that other people may not do. And this is things we do on an everyday basis basis. This isn't just once in a while, by the way, guys, keep this in mind. It's every single day. Flip your dollar, $5 super chat. Thank you for the info. Thank you for the super chat, the support and watching the channel. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will go ahead and uh, pop that up there on the screen. If I can figure out how to do it again, there we go. And then um, we appreciate, you know, flip your dollar being here. So appreciate all of you guys being here, especially those of you that support the channel. Um, so number one through five, just as a recap for anybody who might've joined the chat a little bit later. Uh, number one is don't sweat the small things. Time management, worry about what's important, worry about what makes you the most money. Don't worry about a little pen mark on the side of your postcard. Just poop, out the door it goes as long as you described it. Uh, don't worry about pen marks on the side of your boxes, excuse me. Um, just focus on the important things. Don't go in my Facebook group and ask me if a smudge on the label is gonna matter from you shipping it. Please, I assure you it's not gonna matter. So. Number two, have a plan, make a list, daily list, bullet journal, stars got one if you need one, um, your phone's got one, your iPad's got one, you got notepads, you got pen and paper, whatever you have to do, make a list, stick to it, and that's it. Number three, hard work. Nobody gets successful business without hard work and win the lottery or inherit something, uh, which still requires some work and no stupidity. Um, number four is spending money. Scared money doesn't make money. If you don't spend money, you'll never make money. And number five is knowing your numbers. Account for everything. That's our recap, one through five. Uno. Uno through Cinco, did I do? Okay, I did, Uno through Cinco. One through five. Number six is we network, use social media, and get to know other people. I lost my place on my notepad. <laughs> Rule number one is never lose your place on the notepad. Uh, number six, uh, is networking and social media, getting to know other people, learning from other people in your industry or your niche. It doesn't mean spending all your time playing uh, Candy Crush with your friend or Call of Duty. It means actually networking, learning, conferences, whenever we get back to conferences. Um, it means you know getting ideas. It means partnering up sometimes. You know, I'm never against partnering up. I've done it many times. Um, yeah, you can sell Abercrombie uh, brand new. It's Abercrombie, by the way. Flip your dollar. It's Abercrombie. I think I just spelled it right. Yes, you can sell brand new. Um, so it's so important to immerse yourself. Don't waste your whole day. Like I said, you got to work hard. But it is important to be a part of a community in today's world, to learn from other people, to research what other people do, successful people, to really, really learn. I learn every day from tons of not only you guys in my group and you guys that are part of the show, but also from the other big sellers that you all are familiar with. So that's number six. Number seven is one that I have the hardest time convincing people of. And this is, they'll, I could convince some of you to go spend, you know, max your credit card out on inventory before I can convince you to do the following. And the following, what do you think it is? What do you guys think it is? I literally could convince people to max out a credit card faster than I could convince them to do the following as a reseller or as any entrepreneur really. But what do you think I could convince somebody that I have the hardest time convincing people to do? What do I, uh, what do you think it is? Any, any day you learn something new is a good day. Yeah, I'm with you, Adam. I'm with you. What do you guys think that is? What do I have the hardest time convincing people to do? Using social media to sell. Uh, some people are pretty invited to that. Not really. YouTube is YouTube's a tough one to get people to do. You're on the right track. Hiring help is pretty important. 
Uh, I don't think people are against hiring help, honestly. Market, Call of Duty's fun, though. Yeah. Um, no, hiring help's never really... There we go. The comments have spoken. Hiring help has never really been too difficult when people need it. People want to... People want to hire VAs and employees. I don't know. It's crazy. It's easy to get them convinced that. Um, Multi-platform. So that is diversifying. Going to other platforms, be it Amazon, be it uh, Shopify, be it Poshmark, be it uh, selling through your Instagram channel or your YouTube channel. All great answers. But the multi-platform diversification is the hardest thing. People are scared of change. They're scared of adding new platforms that they're not familiar with. They're scared of adding in um, or learning new platforms that they've never used. They're scared of messing up. They're scared of making mistakes. They're scared of losing money. They are scared of you know having to take the time and the effort, putting in that hard work to actually figure out something new. And I, you know, multiple streams of income is probably the single most important thing on this list because there are weeks and months that I make two or $3,000 doing X. There are weeks and months that that same stream of income is worth 200 or $300, but something else picked up the slack. So if you don't have multiple streams, multiple platforms, it's a recipe for disaster. Think about the largest companies in the world. So Amazon doesn't just make money by selling product. They also make money by you selling product and collecting fees. They make money through Amazon's web service. They have an AWS web service. They have a cloud service. Amazon is now making money through distribution and their logistics services. Amazon has 20 streams, 30 streams of income. They have a ton. They have people paying 40 bucks a month to have a store. They have all kinds of income. Um, you know, hiring help is is one, uh, which we're going to talk about in just a second. So that's actually number seven is diversification. And number eight is we get help two ways. One is we hire help. We hire VAs. We hire employees. It's important to expand and get help. Trusted help. It is absolutely clutch and key to hire help when you need it. That is for sure. The second way that we get help is if we don't know how to do something, we pay someone else to do it. They don't necessarily have to be an employee or a VA. They could just be a contractor. For example, I paid Fiverr to, to uh, create graphic designs for me. Uh, I might pay a YouTube person to edit a video or something along those lines. I typically do all of my own. I, only like once I've ever had someone do, do it for me. But I'm just giving an example that you hire employees or VAs, hire help, or hire a contract to do the work for you. Otherwise, you're going to sit around and things just aren't going to get done. So I needed, you know, website design. It's going to be like a thousand bucks. Okay, I can spend a thousand bucks, get the website up and running, and it can start making me a few hundred dollars a month, and in three or four months, I'll have the money back. Or I can sit around and try to do it myself for three or four months, fail, waste the time, and then end up having to pay someone to do it anyways, right? Pay to get help when you need it. VAs, employees, or contracted help. That is number eight. So we uh, we are on to number nine. Number nine was mentioned earlier, and it's scaling. It is getting bigger. If you're a reseller, it is one obvious. Buying bulk merchandise, wholesale, pallets, liquidation, bulk, whatever it is, it's buying more merchandise. If you are a stock trader, instead of buying and selling one stock or two stocks or a couple stocks with a few thousand bucks, you're going to bump up and buy 20 stocks with $10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000. You're going to scale the business up. If you're a YouTuber who's making one video a week, you're going to start making a couple videos a week. You're going to start getting on other social media platforms. There is a ton of ways for you to scale up. You can shorten your, um, your learning curves by hiring people to help you. Yes, that's a great point, Adam. Um, so uh, there's a ton of ways that you can scale up, but you have, you know, hiring people is a great way to do it as well. That allows you to free up your time. But if you don't have help and you don't have employees or VAs or contractors or people you hire, scaling up becomes tough. For us resellers, it means buying more merchandise. But if you're buying more merchandise, Somebody has to process that merchandise, list that merchandise, wholesale that merchandise, ship that merchandise. Somebody's still got to do all the work. Buying, it's easy. I can buy, I could have a million pieces of inventory land at my door tomorrow. All it takes is money, right? Like if you have the money, I could start just boom, 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 and having pallets land here all day long. 
who's going to handle all of that labor, all that work. So that's number number eight is, you know, or number nine, excuse me, scaling up by doing number, by number eight, by hiring employees and hiring VAs. So number eight leads you to number nine and number nine requires number eight. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck in the same $2,000 a month income you've always made or whatever it is that you make. So that's number nine. I think scalability is definitely um, the most important one. What's up, CJ? How you doing? Uh, so we're on to number 10. Let me, uh, let me recap uh, one through nine for you guys. Things that six-figure sellers, entrepreneurs, resellers, successful people do in general. Number one, don't sweat the little things. Worry about your time management. Worry about what's most productive and most profitable for you. Have a plan. Make a list, a bullet journal, a notepad, an app, a to-do list. Keep to it. Number three, put in the hard work. You're never going to get anything out of a business if you don't work hard. Number four is don't be afraid to spend money. Make good investments, but spend money to make money. Number five is know your numbers. Accounting, bookkeeping, taxes. If you know them and you know where you're at, you'll know how to fix it and you'll know how to make more money. Um, number six, networking, using social media. Get to know people. Study people, research people, research the market, study the market, learn from other people, get new ideas. Number seven, diversify, get on different platforms, different streams of income. Otherwise, one egg, all eggs in one basket, no go. Number eight, get help, hire help, hire employees, VAs, contracted work. Whenever you need something done that makes more sense to pay for it, do it, spend the money. Number nine, scale your business, buy more stuff, make more videos, create more sites. Whatever it is you do, do more of it. By using number eight, your hired help contractors and VAs. Number 10, what does anyone think that number 10 is on the list of things that six-figure sellers and entrepreneurs do that other people may not do on a daily basis? Guys, please keep in mind everything I'm telling you here are things we do on an everyday basis with the exception of hiring new employees every single day. How can you find out what a fair price to pay for help is? Um, well, you can look up the hourly rates in your area, depending on what they're doing. If it's data entry, computer entry, you can look that up, you know, 10, 11, 12 bucks an hour. Uh, you can look up what the minimum wage in your state is. Uh, you can look up what similar jobs are paying. You can, um, you can certainly ask around in the community what other people pay. You can ask about listing people like per piece. Lots, lots of ways to do that. Um, what did Glenn, did I miss what Glenn said? I saw Glenn come in. What did he say? I just cloned myself three, uh, cloning itself. Never give up. Drink. No, consistency. Reward themselves. Grinder is on the right path. Uh, drinking, yeah, is a great way. Never giving up is a great tip out also. Uh, entrepreneurs do never give up. Successful entrepreneurs keep going no matter what. Uh, Danny hit it. Family alone time. Number 10 is you have to take time for yourself. You have to have fun, a hobby, uh, spare time. You have to do things that are conducive to de-stressing, relaxing, and getting your brain out of the work mode at least some of the time. Um, I do agree that having a drink once in a while is probably good advice. Don't overdo it uh, ever. But once in a while, it's a good idea. Um Thanks, Figgy, for hitting the like button. I do appreciate everyone that did hit the like button. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, it helps, does help the video, and other people will get this information. Continuing your education, Adam adding to the list. Number 10 is fun. I play a couple of games at night. We played a few board games uh, here and there. We, we do all kinds of stuff that just kind of tries to relax us. Everything in moderation, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm on a permanent vacation right now until my house is done. So I would say uh, I would say that going on vacation is good as long as you take that in moderation too. Uh, my drink is sadly dead. It was just a little one. It was a uh, Sprite and mango mix with some vodka. So it was quite good. Mango vodka. Once a week on Thursday. Yep, I do. Uh, I do have my drink with you guys on Thursday. So uh, work hard, play hard is an awesome... You know, we put that in the video sometimes. I put that on Instagram sometimes. If you're not, you know, playing hard, just like you're working hard. That's kind of the reason people I talk about playing video games. 
occasionally at nighttime. I'm not a big gamer because I don't get a lot of time, but that's the only time I can de-stress, sit down in bed and just sit there, you know, finish my work and then play a game. Why don't I record it and put it on YouTube? I discussed this in the other video and I discussed it with a few people in person actually recently. Um, one of our bartenders was a big gamer and he asked, you know, he was just talking about being a YouTuber and, um, and his kids wanted to be gamers. And I said, you know, you really got to love video games a lot because I like video games. I love them most of the time. But if you have to start recording and doing what you love for work, it's no longer working hard and playing hard. You're just working and working again. And it would never actually be conducive to me de-stressing and relaxing. I would be thinking about, oh, my God, I got to record a video game and post a video. I want to. Trust me, I wanted to. But it's just really hard. So you got to have something that is totally separate from work. And number 10 is like the de-stress relax factor. Otherwise, you're, you're never – going to actually you know have that you time and away time people have hobbies people like to watch youtube people like to exercise people like to um you know knit people like to make mittens <laughs> i thought i'd throw that out there play with the wrecking crew uh how's the house coming slowly casey is reserving this resort for all of february oh it's painful um, so we're going to be here till March 1st. Don't know if the house will be done by then, but fingers crossed, maybe or close. Um, some people like fishing, <laughs> playing WoW, diamond dot painting. I don't even know what that is. Some people like watching, uh, drinking wine. Um, what in the hell is diamond dot painting? You sent me a picture of it. I don't even know what that is. Sorry, YouTube. I said hell. I said it again. What in the hell is diamond dot painting? Cooking is huge. Makeup. A lot of people organizing. You people, you guys have a lot of hobbies. So as an entrepreneur, I think a lot of entrepreneurs have hobbies. Let me give you a couple examples that are really good. I just thought about this as I'm sitting here, you know, talking to you guys. Elon Musk turned his hobbies. You know, Elon Musk didn't make his money on Tesla. He's filthy rich because of Tesla now. The richest man in the world, right? Um, but uh, Mindy does hula hoop. Wow, that's impressive. Kids unboxing toys, yeah. Elon Musk made his money back in the day. He was a PayPal investor. He made like a billion dollars on PayPal, which now sounds like nothing. It was at the time was huge. Um, Elon Musk is now, you know, the Tesla, obviously the Tesla guy, but he's now onto, um, you know, spaceships, uh, you know, whatever, um, you know, SpaceX that he can think of to fly to the moon or Mars or wherever he's going. He created the boring company. For fun, he created a company called The Boring Company that makes flamethrowers, for God's sakes. The guy has fun outside of work, and he didn't create The Boring Company to make money. I'm sure he lost money on The Boring Company, and I don't think he created SpaceX to make money. In fact, I don't think SpaceX makes money. In fact, you know, if we look over there at Jeff Bezos and his, his uh, you know, billions of dollars, he created the company Blue Origin, Blue Origin is a space company, and uh, he's invested billions of dollars into, I don't think he's made a dime just to send people because it's a hobby of his. It's fun for him, right? So uh, that's it. And and people have fun with that. Uh, you know, Elon created SpaceX as a joke and sunk billions of dollars into it. But look, this is what, whatever it is that you do for fun is a key part of being an entrepreneur. You have to have something you know, we spend hundreds of dollars on iPads or computers or video games or even thousands of dollars on game. They spend billions of dollars on giant spaceships. Like, <laughs> great. Um, yeah, Elon, his story, I really do like Elon Musk's story too. You know, somebody told him he had passed Jeff Bezos as the richest guy in the world last week. And he said, cool, back to work. Like, the guy is intense. He's no joke. So um, that's just it. What's up, Denise? Welcome in. So at the end of the day, have something that is yours. Have something that is separate. Have something that is, is uh, what's up, Hawaii? Aloha. Something that is absolutely yours and something that is, is just completely off the grid from your, your reselling or your, your business or your YouTube or whatever it is that allows you to, um, to unwind. So that's my 10. Um, yeah, he did sell all of his mansions. That's my 10 things for you guys. You know, don't, you know, not sweating little things, planning, putting in the hard work, spending money to make money, accounting for everything, networking and learning, uh, diversifying, getting help when you need it, using that help to scale, and having a hobby or, diver you know, a fun side thing that allows you to keep it all uh, 
under wraps. So Mindy, hula hooping 30 minutes a day. That is, whew, I would be spent. I'd be donezo. I don't know if I could hula hoop all day. Um, yeah, so if there's anything you guys want to add to it, uh, enjoy your life and be happy. Eric probably hit the nail on the head, man. Enjoy, um, enjoy your life because part of making that money is enjoying it, right? Part of running that business and being successful is enjoying it. So that's a great, Eric, throwing it out there. I appreciate it. If you're watching this video on replay, or if you want to, if you can come back to this video, if you're watching live and you want to come back later, uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think successful people and what you do that's successful that other people may not do or that other people don't think about or that you do that takes care of you 100% of the day and actually helps you to be successful. Put it down in the comment section. Those comments are really important and I appreciate it. It gives the video a lot of engagement and really helps the YouTube algorithm. So uh, we can't lie about that. Um, uh, Miss, uh, is it Tr Trinia Gregory? Taking care of 100 plants. Woo, that is, I couldn't take care of one. Uh, and Mindy's serious, 30 minutes nonstop. Holy crap. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely no thank you. But good on you, good on you. Uh, Dixie does have a question. Yeah, if you guys have any questions you want to pop up in the chat for the last 10 or 15 minutes, please put it over there and I'll answer them. Um, now that you have more than 500 items in your store, do you have to have, choose 10,000 with scheduling a sale? No, you can still choose the 500 and then you'll have to run a second promotion for the rest of them. Uh, the 10,000 one is just, somebody help me here, it's just for the CSV file upload, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, I think it's just if you're doing through a... Uh, a spreadsheet import. You don't have to still choose the 500 and then just do a second one. Somebody told me they bumped it to a thousand, but every time I do it, it's still 500. Uh, Paul coaches kids sports. That's an awesome hobby. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, I always think about that. If I have a, a kid anytime soon and they get to be five or six or seven and they start playing sports, um, do I want to coach? Do I want to be a part of that? I like to watch things. I don't know if I'd want to coach because that's a lot of work, you know, maybe, maybe want to be like assistant coach. I don't know. Um, yeah, so World of Warcraft, video games, board games uh, are always, you know, fun. Keith and Star convinced me to buy uh, Betrayal at House uh, on the Hill, which is a very cool game. Speaking of Star, I got to send you some videos of some people that make YouTube uh, channels, YouTube videos on playing board games. They have like an aerial camera and a front camera. It's pretty cool. Um, going for walks is important. Vitamin D and fresh air. <laughs> I got so many comments for that star. So many comments for that. Uh, Adam. Yes. Uh, my admins in the chat do have YouTube channels. Flippin' Hippos is star and Keith and Adam's exploits is Adam's exploits on YouTube. You can click them both, subscribe to them and check out their channels. Uh, after this, uh, we clean and mop our floors every night. Ooh. Um, Denise uh, does have a good question. Um, I work full time, love to amp up the store, but don't have a lot of time to do listings because she works full time. Any suggestions? I have 600 items in my store now. My suggestion is you have to make the most of your weekends and the most of your time. You could, in theory, maybe hire VAs. The problem is you're still gonna put in a solid amount of time and you are not saving a ton of time with the VAs a little bit and you're gonna spend a lot of money to do it. So. Uh, maybe hire somebody local to be a lister for you. If you know a mom, a stay-at-home mom or a college kid or maybe a married military wife, there's there's a lot of people you could approach. Maybe they could do the listing for you where you could give them a bunch of stuff, you know, 100 pieces on Monday and they could get it all done and you could pay them on Friday when they bring it back and that would get all your listing done and you could focus on sourcing. Um, that would be it. Uh, Darren, late to show, got COVID, sucks. Going back to sleep, I'll watch the rest later. Have a great night, Darren. Hope you feel better. Sorry you did that, buddy. Sorry you got that. Um, yeah, so late designs on 39. Hey, Mr. Buys a Lot is in the house. One of the best YouTube. Always great info on here. Thank you so much, Mr. Buys a Lot, for the $10 super chat. Give him a big hashtag and a woo woo. He has a huge channel. He's been on a lot of our YouTube channels. He's done interviews with Dominic from Primetime Treasure Hunter, Hustler, Hunter. I always forget which one he's using. Um, yeah, so it is. Uh, you should do a video about adjusted to running a business homeless or something of that sort. <laughs> yeah, I might actually make a video recap of being here. And actually, that's a good idea. Thank you, Jen. Um, is selling used media like DVD and CD still profitable? It can be. DVDs are tough. There's a lot of good selling CDs. Uh, Mr. Buys a Lot with the $10 super chat. I appreciate all of that, Mr. Buys a Lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Brian, he's awesome. 
Um, when are you moving to your dream house? Pretty soon? Man, Mindy, I hope soon. Uh, March, sometime in March. I really hope so. Um, I really, really hope so. I could actually hire someone to source for me if I could. Aurora's going the Myers going the, the flip side. Like she said she would hire. So most people hire people to list for them, hire people to hire. They hire people to do the listing for them. Whew. Uh, you'd think I had more than one drink. I didn't, I promise. Um, Myra says she'd hire people to source for her. So I don't know if that's because of your, your state and shutdowns or just because you don't have time to source or you don't like sourcing. Some people don't like sourcing. Some people can't source. Some people's states are shut down. So that might be a little different for her. Uh, that's actually reverse from what a lot of people just don't do, like to do the listing and they just, they hate it. So <laughs> Fat Man the Flipper is in the house. He reached out to me the other day. Alex, thank you so much. I got to catch up with you, buddy. Send me a private message when you get some time. Uh, I love Alex. I love his content. I love what he's about. He's a cool dude. Uh, I hope to meet him. I hope we get some conferences. I can meet him in person. I feel like Alex is like the party animal. I feel like I can have a lot of fun with him. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Trina is thinking, is it Trinia? Trinia or Trinia? I'm sorry. I butcher names. I'm the worst at it. I'm really sorry. Uh, hiring her son to list for her. It's a good idea. Admitting is the first uh, first step. Aurora hates sourcing. You should balk source, Myra. You really should. Um, fat man has, you know, Alex has people that source for him. Uh, Jen says she'll do it. <laughs> Look, you already got just from asking, you got people, you know, uh, volunteering for you. See that? So that's awesome. Um, Mindy, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate it. You didn't have to do that. Thank you so much, Mindy, for the two ninety nine super sticker and, and, uh, Brian up top with a $10 super chat and earlier with the super chat. So thank you guys. Um, gone to a lot of online auctions for inventory. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, you know, Myra and the other people who don't like sourcing could do online auctions. They could do bulk purchasing. There's a few things that can be done. Um, you know, I I'll have to discuss that with some of you guys privately, but, um, <laughs> Myra, Myra, I don't tell where people are located unless they want to locate. She is located out in the West though. She's out in the Western United States. I do know that. Um, she's way out there. So, uh, I follow a lot of you on Instagram and Facebook, so I do see where you are, uh, but I don't know, uh, I don't know specifically like the city. Some of you I do. She's in New Mexico, so she put it out there. I'll never put anyone's location out unless they tell me uh, that it's okay. So uh, yeah, but uh, one day at a time, bro. Yeah. So I think Alex would be a lot of fun. Thank you, Fat Man, for joining the chat, by the way. Um, yeah, a lot of you live in the boonies and need to have inventory delivered. So why not? If you hate sourcing anyways, have it delivered. NK Bricks World, uh, welcome in. Joining from down under from Australia. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Uh, Brian and Alex, you guys cracked me up. There's got to be an eBay conference this year. Look, we got like three months, they're saying, four months. I know what they said last year, but in three or four months, we got February and March, April and May, possibly by June, everything can start going back to normal or normal enough that they can have an eBay open conference. Um, and I will find a way to go there. I will find a way for me to be a part of that if all of you are going to be a part of it. So um, yeah, San Antonio is a lot of opportunities. Vicky is out in Arizona, so neighbors with you. You guys are way out west. I'm all the way over in, in the little armchair leg, the front leg of, of America in Florida. <laughs> uh yeah, so hopefully they'll have an eBay open. We'll all get to hang out. We'll talk about this all in person. Um, I hate the term new normal. I just want us to go back to normal. Yeah, I don't want there to be a new normal. I want to go back to the way things were before. Uh, but I don't know if that's that's actually going to happen. Going back to the way things were before is a tough thing. I, I don't know. I, I, just, I just, I don't know. Um. I can be the designated driver, Alex. <laughs> Eric's up in PA, yeah, and Coco from Tennessee. Angelique, they should have open in Florida. Here, here. Cheers to that. Orlando has one of the biggest conference centers. Angelique, they have a million, uh, Angie, uh, hotels in Orlando. I'm all for it. The only thing is I think people would be like, what can we do in Orlando? Uh, Disney, Universal, Islands of Adventure, Legoland. There's so much stuff. Not me. I'm drinking the whole time. <laughs> me too. Uh here, 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 here to that. I'm all for Florida. Angie, I'm with that. Uh, by the way, Angie, I meant to message you last week 
Um, I know there was, in case anybody is wondering, uh, I don't usually bring this stuff on the channel, but I did want to say uh, there is a tragedy right around the corner from where I sold my house last week. Uh, I want to say it was like last weekend. I can't remember the day. Um, but um, there was a police officer uh, 30 years on the Hillsborough County, which is the county I used to live in. I'm moving to Pasco County now. Hillsborough County Police Department, um, who was responding to a mentally unstable uh, suspect. Uh, he took off in his car, the suspect, and ended up ramming the police officer and he killed the police officer, Hillsborough County police officer, who was actually retiring that week or weekend or the next week. And um, he was killed in the line of duty, literally around the corner. Angie's familiar with where I used to live. I sold my house. I don't live there anymore. But um, so I meant to message you, Angie. Uh, I, I totally forgot after that night we were out and I saw the story. So uh, I feel for you guys, Angie, and I'm sorry for that loss. I don't know if you knew him or not, but uh, he I think he had a daughter on the police force as well. So it was really sad. Um, just a flip of a switch and he was killed. So, uh, yeah, I, I meant to message you and I'm glad that you came in here. So uh, sorry that I forgot about that. But uh, I did see that story. Um, anyways, so that is uh, not the not the note I wanted to end on, but uh, lots of things to do. Lots of things to do in Orlando. Yeah, get eaten by gators. No. Uh, yeah, so uh, you won't get eaten by gators. None of us get eaten by gators. Go Google the rate of gator attacks in Florida per year, and uh, and um, you'll see that it's, it's very few, if any. <laughs> There's like one a year or something. I don't know the number. Somebody Google it. But uh, yeah, needless to say... Um, <clears throat> Florida would be awesome. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Um, and in case you're wondering, yes, I, I don't give out people's professions. Angie is in the law enforcement profession. Um, people have seen that before from her. So, okay. I'm going to leave you guys. It's been, wow, we've been on for almost 50 minutes. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. I appreciate all of you being here. I appreciate the support. Uh, thank you for dropping in. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below after the video. Give the video a thumbs up before you head out. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to the algorithm in YouTube, which is getting harder and harder by the day. Uh, and if there's anything I can do for any of you at any time, rockstarflipper at gmail.com. I answer all my emails. There's only one sitting right now, so I always clear them. And uh, Gators, do not um, freak you out. I promise you, I'll take you guys on a tour. If you come down here to Florida and hang out with me, I'll take you all on a tour of Florida from my home, and I'll show you guys around. So it'll be fun. Woo! Come on, eBay Open. Listen to me. Florida, Orlando, do it. I'm in Orlando right now. Woo! -hoo. All right. Thank you guys so much to everyone. Bye to everyone. Thanks to my admins, Adam and Star from Flippin' Hippos. Click their channel, subscribe to them, give them a lot of love. Also, uh, Fat Man Alex has some great social media content. And Brian, <laughs> the uh, Mr. Buys a Lot. Myra, thank you to all of you guys who are in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mindy, as always, you're the best. And I will see everyone next time. Bye, guys.